It's a real pleasure to be here. I, I think one of the um, remarks that Gil just made shows the difference between our country and England historically, not just today. Um, our country was founded when the, the British government had a policy of, of colonialism in which it sought to exploit the Americans uh, to tax them without representation. And when the Americans protested, there was an escalation and the British sought to disarm the Americans. And that led to, to violence because the Americans thought this is our only chance to protect ourselves. Um, when you look at a debate topic like this, guns reduce crime uh, for and against, let's define our terms a little bit. Um, guns possessed by who? Um, guns possessed by law-abiding citizens w reduces crime, but not guns possessed by criminals. And what does crime mean? We look at, at the term crime, I think, in a, we should look at it in a very broad way. Crime means the, the unjust aggression against life, liberty, and, and property of another person. So crime can be committed singly by one person against another or in small groups by a gang of, of criminals against another. Or at the highest level, it can be committed by governments. Uh, when we look at the problem of genocide, uh, the problem of crimes against humanity, these are, are major crimes uh, involving large populations frequently in which um, uh, guns are used unjustly and they're used unjustly and, and there's an ability to do that on behalf of authoritarian or police states because uh, the population is disarmed. So when we look at this issue, we should look at a, a, not just here and now, uh, what happens in the United States, or uh, what's happened in the last decade or two, or what happens today, but look at it historically in terms of um, what sorts of societies have existed historically and which ones have balance and democracy and republicanism and which ones are, are, are the kinds of states that you don't want to live in. Uh, Nazi Germany, Uganda under Idi Amin, or, or um, uh, Cambodia under the Khmer Rouge. I mean, th this is real. Uh, we live in a, a society that's very nice right now. It's not guaranteed that it'll always be that way, either in terms of your own personal life or in terms of the, the possibility that a government could turn bad. Um, what I think we're advocating tonight, those of us on the side of the proposition, uh, is that you should have freedom of choice to protect yourself if you decide to do that. Um, one of the questions that was asked recently in the U.S. Supreme Court, um, the District of Columbia was trying to defend its handgun ban, and they said that, you, that uh, it's okay to ban handguns and that all guns should have trigger locks and be disassembled and never loaded. And one of the Supreme Court justices asked the question, well, what if you hear the door crash in and um, you're fumbling for your reading glasses and, and trying to find, turn on the lamp and your hands are trembling? Um, maybe it would be a good idea to have a gun available if, if something like that happened. So the, the question is not whether everybody should have a gun, uh, but the question is should you have the ability to exercise that freedom of choice if you are a responsible citizen and, and that's your decision to do so. Um, our American Revolution proved the ability of an armed populace basically to defeat a, a tyranny and that's why we ended up in our Bill of Rights with the right of the people to keep and bear arms, the declaration that it shall not be infringed, and also a declaration in favor of a militia because that enhanced the security of a free state. Security means that the, a, a free state is preserved as a viable political entity, it has republican institutions, uh, and people themselves are able to uh, dissuade tyranny, they're able to, to fight individual criminals. It was always considered to be a responsibility of individuals to in the ancient hue and cry and, and uh, the watch and ward to, uh, if, if criminals were on the loose, to try to, uh, to catch them. And we, now we have degenerated somewhat into a society where you don't help anybody and, and we have many instances where criminals are attacking people and nobody basically gives a damn. So basically it comes back to freedom of choice. I'd, I'd like to use a couple of maybe legal cases to illustrate the point. Uh, you've, you've heard D.C. became the murder capital of, of the United States after it enacted a, a handgun ban. Um, there's no duty of, of the police to protect you. Uh, it's not just impossible for them to do so, it's not a legal duty. Right before the handgun ban in D.C. was enacted, there were uh, three women who were in, um, in a boarding house and they were broken into. And there was two individuals who um, 
over a period of many, many hours raped and robbed and otherwise uh, assaulted them. They called 9-11 several times and the police would come knock on the door and nobody would respond. Uh, the police would drive by the, the house because these ladies made repeated calls to 9-11. And um, so they, this ordeal, this, this nightmare finally ended and so they sued the D.C. government and the courts ruled that there's no duty of government to protect any individual person. They have a duty to society at large, which is just kind of a, a useless concept when you're an individual and you're a crime victim. So there, there's no duty to protect you. And then the question becomes, well, maybe you would like to protect yourself. Maybe you'd like to at least have the legal right to do that. And that's what the Second Amendment is, is partly uh, intended to guarantee. That's what the Supreme Court just held in D.C. versus Heller. Uh, that we do have an individual right to keep and bear arms, and it's a right. It's not something you have to do. It's not a duty, but it's, it's something that you can do. I represented a group of litigants um, in a companion case, and um, they live in, in the ghetto in D.C. They're, they're victims of, of uh, robberies, uh, house breakings. Uh, this happened repeatedly, and they, uh, sim they were good citizens, and they simply wanted access to guns. The same thing it could be illustrated in Hurricane Katrina where the police chief announced no law-abiding citizen could have guns. And basically they, the, the police themselves disarmed individual citizens and we see the result of that. But if you went across the river into Algiers, the community known as Algiers, citizens uh, armed themselves, they provided their own arms and they kept violence down, they kept looting down. The same thing happened in the LA riots and the same thing happened in Hurricane Andrew in, in, in Florida. Uh, there was no police protection, no National Guard protection for several days. Armed citizens came forward and, and basically made uh, sure that there was no looting and no robberies and no murders uh, proceeding. So the bottom line is we don't have the same uh, system as England. You, you didn't hear Gil announce that Seattle Police Force should disarm themselves. And, and to the contrary, we should have armed police forces and we should have that right to be exercised by individual citizens. Thank you.